Yeah, yeah. Hello, good evening everyone. Can everybody hear me? Give a little tick, a little green tick if you can hear me. There we go. And let's see. You can perfect. Everybody's everybody's there. Um hello, good evening. Nice to uh to be with you again. Hope you've all had a, a fantastic uh week. Mine has been hectic to say the least. Um so I'm relishing the opportunity to sit down and uh and have a chat and uh hear a bit more about you guys as well. So um second session um called Who We Are, so really trying to kind of twofold purpose really. A you get to know each other. This is a platform which is unlike us all sitting in a room, so we have to find other means of uh, getting to know each other other than, oh, who's that face over there uh, two rows forward? Um, so that's one reason. The other reason is to get us to think about the means of communication that we use, um, how we might represent ourselves uh, in terms of our profile and how we might, what we might include. Um, and this ties into a couple of briefs uh, for this unit, and I'm going to talk about those more specifically um, a little bit later on after we've after we've done our introductions. Um, so yeah, there's there's three things for this session really. A recap of session one, I'll just quickly uh, talk through that presentation of each other to the group um, and an introduction to unit briefs and the marking criteria. The the nuts and bolts of this unit really, just to give you a sense of. Uh, of what's expected for the unit, and so I didn't want to bombard you all um, last week with an overload of information. So I think that's the that's the best approach. So last week we um, last week we discussed the idea of of defining our terms. We just touched on kind of ideas around research, what we think research kind of means to us, um, and also. Um, how we define kind of stickier terms like culture and enterprise, and there was a good bit of kind of discussion there, um, kind of observation. I think quite personal observation. I think that's something worth remembering is that research can be a very personal thing, and we all take from it uh, very different things. We have different approaches. So when we define our terms, then we're kind of laying out the store by which we hold uh, the, the 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 way in which we're using a term. So we're we define it clearly. Okay, one second. There we go. So we defined our terms. We also looked at keeping a research journal um, and the means of that, and then we did a brief introduction to workflow. Um, and again, the reason that the workflow comes in is it ties into um, part of the unit brief. Um, so I wanted to introduce the, that last week to get you used to the idea, but not launch you into it too quickly. So I'll talk about that again um, a little bit later, um, and I'll talk specifically about a task uh, and a brief that relates to that. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is just recap. You were asked to separate into pairs, and I have to say I'm really uh, impressed by everyone's um, presentations and they're, they're up on Padlet. Tim sent the link, still in, still just in the chat box for those of you who, who joined us just uh, right at the start of the session. There's a link uh, just a little bit further up in that uh, chat box um, that Tim posted which links you to all the PDFs. I know there was a bit of trouble with the forum. Um, please bear with us. It's, it's a learning curve for us as, uh, as much as it is for you. Um, so you were separated into pairs, prepare an image of yourself and an image of home, a location or an associative image. Tim's just posted that. Um, Tim's just posted that link in there uh, again. So uh, Pila, there's a there's a link in the chat box. I know you've just joined us. There's a link in the chat box. Um, and Irene, there's a link in the chat box which you can connect to the presentations um, that people have made for each other. Um, and then we wanted you to present to another group member using online means, finding out who your partner was. Again, to try and get you to know each other, but also to think about that idea of research as a process of investigation. 
not just into academic subjects but also into each other. We, we, we interview people and we discuss and we talk and we chat to people and we, we learn things. That's how, that's how we operate uh, on a daily basis. And I think what we take away from those things as the person listening to someone and what we say, there are sometimes different emphases uh, of things get picked out and, and teased out that you wouldn't ordinarily say in yourself. So that's kind of part of the reason for uh, for this task. So what we're going to what we're going to attempt to do, and again, this is this is uh, experimenting a little bit with the technology, is we're going to we're going to get you to introduce each other. Um, we probably won't have time to do everyone. We'll see how we go. Um, if not, please don't be uh, offended. Um, they're all there, and people can people can go through them at their own time. We'll have to keep an eye on the clock. Uh, we're scheduled to finish at about 7:15 this evening, I believe. So um, myself and Tim will keep an eye on the clock, so we're so we're running time. Now, um, as Tim said, um, I'll kind of pick the first one. We'll go through them in order. I think that they're that they're there. So Duncan, we're going to be picking on picking on you first, unfortunately. Um, or fortunately, you can get it out of the way. Um, and what I will do is um, I'll hand over to you, Duncan, in a second. I'll turn off the talk and the video. And then if you want to turn on the talk and video if you'd like, if you'd rather not turn on the video, that's fine, as long as we can hear you. And then um, if you want to talk a little bit about Yanina, um, you can. And then if we've got comments or questions, <coughs> we can add those in the uh, in the chat box. So I think without further ado, I'm going to I'm going to hand over to Duncan just to just to talk about um, your partner, the person that you uh, that you had to to speak to, and that process a little bit. So let's let's give this a go and see how we uh, see how we get on. So Duncan, over to you. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Hello. Great. Hello everyone. Um, I don't. I just um. Andy and Tim, I don't think uh, Yanina is actually here today, is she? I think she logged on earlier. Um, anyway, so I, I met Yanina a, a couple of days ago, just in person, just to get we, we decided not to speak too much in detail, um, just so we could stick to the assignment um, about, about what we did and what we did. Just we wanted to see each other face to face. And uh, so we met up, had a cup of coffee, and um, and then talked about it because of personal things. And then we decided to... Um, get the ball rolling the next day by um, sending our details to one another via WhatsApp, um, Skype, and um, emails. And I'm just going to pull up my presentation and start talking about it. So Yanina is her, her background, um, her mother, and I think her father also, but they worked in the United Nations, so she was traveling um, around the world a lot as a child. I think she she was... Uh, in a, many schools and, and, and lived in over five or six countries and she has been based in London for the last 16 years which is the longest amount of time she's ever spent anywhere. Um, so she's had quite a lot of influences in what she does and uh, one of them has been um, uh, when she's based in South America in Paraguay she um, set up a company um, called Arabore and um, you can see it's in my first uh, First slide there, and it's a it's a children's clothing company, um, and it's um, uh, based ethically around uh, uh, working closely with the suppliers, and um, not too many middlemen, and creating a good product at the end at the end uh, with um, a close uh, attachment to the to the um, craftsman. Um, she uh, she she's had this company. With the last ten years, and so that she's seen herself grow as an entrepreneur. And in the last couple of years, she felt that uh, her her passion was in building a company and building a brand. And therefore, once this, once um, Arabore was established, which has been really in the last couple of years, she felt her passion has been in a way uh, is not is it's it, it, it's it, 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 her passion um, has sort of died away a little bit for the the company itself and she wants she knows herself that I, it's it's building a company is what she she loves doing so she decided to sell it on and uh, um it, it, it sort of expand her interest in developing businesses so she thinks this course is going to help her 
um, a lot of all of that. And um, as we move on to the next slide, if you scroll down, I'll just check. Sorry, I'm just going to go back to Blackboard again to see. Is this, is this all working properly? Can you all hear me? It's fine. Oh yes, you're going to, the only way you see the slides is through through pad, uh, Padlet, isn't it? Okay, fabulous, brilliant. Let me just go back to it. One second. Your feet. Um. Anyway, so so she go going along alongside her career as an entrepreneur, and um, she uh, has worked for London College of Fashion um, as a con uh, consultant, and uh, you can see that she's been invited to give various TED talks and. She has agreed that her skills as an entrepreneur has helped her out with also with all the, this type of consultancy work she does as well. Um, alongside her her work, she has a young family um, who are here in London with her and her husband, and uh, they uh, uh, she spoke at length about them, and they they sound like a lovely bunch, and that gives her 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 breath um, when she's away from work and. That's it. I'm sure there's lots more about Yanina to, to discover, but for now, I think my time is probably running up. So there you go. Hi, there we go. Thank, Duncan, thank you. That was fantastic. What a brilliant presentation. Um, and lovely to hear about Yamina. As you as you rightly say, Yamina's um not with us unfortunately. So I'm afraid you're um you're gonna we're gonna have to rely on Yanina's um very good looking uh, presentation to um to speak for itself regarding you. Um so I think in that respect we'll let that uh, we'll let that go. Um, but I really enjoyed um, reading about you. Um, just to say that there will be the chance uh, face to face. Everybody will be introducing themselves again, and I'll talk a little bit about that afterwards. So, um, Duncan, you're going to get lots of chance to introduce yourself uh, next time. So, um, after Duncan, um, we're going to move on to. Um, Enrique is going to talk about Anita. And Enrique, if I can ask you just to, to think about uh, three or four key things that came up in response to those questions to talk. We're going to, we're going to give you about three minutes. Um, I'll click on the talk button and we'll hand over to you. You can introduce Anita uh, and we'll go from, from there. Um, I'm really, um, really enjoying seeing the presentations, I have to say. They're, they're, they're really light. They're, they're really, I think what's interesting is how people's identities are, uh, are represented to them. So um, that's great. So uh, Enrica, I am going to hand over to you. I'm going to click the talk button um, and then hand to you. You can click the talk button and the video button or just the talk button if you just want to speak. And when you're finished, if you click the talk button, um, I will uh, come back on again. Okay, over to you, Enrica. Hello everyone, uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Um, so basically, uh, yes, it was very nice to meet uh, uh, Anita. And um, well, basically Anita, she grew up and she's been uh, working and living in London for most of her life. Um, she's working in a client event for a company in the city. And um, this company, is very international because she's working with Europe, Middle East and Africa. And what I understood that uh, she's really willing to get from, um, from, from this master a bit of, uh, um, let's say, creativity, but also um, uh, since he, uh, she, was, uh, she studied custom, uh, custom design and she was a custom designer uh, for, a con uh, for a contemporary theatre company. Um, so I think she kind of wanted to uh, go back to that time and, and, uh, and uh, doing something which is more, a little bit more creative than, than what she's doing now. And then, and then uh, yeah, I think that's, that's, uh, that's it for me. 
and um, it was very nice to, to talk to her. We had a really nice uh, feeling, I hope also for her. And uh, yeah, the, that's Anita, here you are. Enrique, thank you very much. That was that was great, lovely and uh, succinct. Thank you very much. Um, that's great. Okay, so um, next on our list, we have uh, Paulina, who uh, is presenting Jonathan. Um, so again, Paulina, I'm going to hand over to you. You've got a few minutes to uh, tell us about Jonathan. Um, some of the things that came out of your conversation, your impressions and so, and um, and then click the talk button and I will come back on and we'll move on to the next person. Lovely. Okay, so over to you, uh, Paulina. Okay, Paulina, uh, if you are there, maybe you could, if you click the talk button, when I click mine, your talk button should become active, you can click it and, uh, and connect. If not, uh, and you don't want to speak, or if for some reason um, you can't, drop us a, a note in the chat box. If not, we will move on. Hi, this is Paulina on now. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, great. I actually um, found those two presentations we just had on, but I can't find mine on Jonathan, but um, I can remember a lot of things about him. Uh, we chatted by Skype, and then we've used Facebook and email to compile this. Uh, Jonathan Swain is an interesting artist. He lives in Brighton, um, and he can't quite see the sea, although it's almost at smelling distance, but um, he feels he likes from his home the view from the window, because the trellis on the opposite uh, building, he feels like it's like Batman, and it's protecting their whole neighborhood and everybody that lives there. There's a nice uh, short thing about him by a local advertising company on Vimeo where you can uh, have a peek into his home as well. Uh, he's, uh, he's born in Leicester. Uh, he describes himself as a Sussex person with a northern accent, um, but he's been in Brighton for over 20 years. He actually studied um, in London. and. Um, so Camden and the King's Cross area is actually very familiar to him, and he still works there a lot. Uh, he, studies at, he studied at Middlesex Polytechnic, and there was a huge fire there at Alexander Palace, where he, he had all of his works as a student, and everything he had ever made was uh, burnt to the ground. So. And apparently, this uh, fire has followed him a lot in his work. And there's um, a picture where he's um, working with glass and smoke at the Tappan Biennale in Cheshire. Uh, Jonathan is difficult to label. You can't really put him in a box. But he's an artist. He's a curator. He's a writer. And he works across boundaries. So in theater as well, um, so I couldn't pigeonhole him, <laughs> and I don't think he would like to be pigeonholed. Um, and here's, for example, a picture of him in Brighton at a festival where he had made a mobile exhibition of people who work at night. And so all those portraits are of people who work during the night, and they were exhibited by a parade at night during a festival. And then the people who were carrying those uh, portraits, they knew all about that person whose portrait they were carrying and what kind of work they do. 
So as you can see, he works. It's not very conformist art. It's very cross boundary stuff. And Jonathan said that um, he's always liked working with groups. This is why some of the reasons why he's studying on this course. That he'd like to find more about how more about the dynamics of groups and how they work and how you can work with them, and also to um, find out how art theatre curating the whole art world and the art business world is changing around us. And then, of course, as funding is changing, he said he's always worked a lot with entrepreneurs, but now. A lot of artists are starting to work with entrepreneurs, and he's trying to move on to new ways of cooperation and um, not just sponsorship, but ways of making people participate and enriching lives. And another thing that he's very interested in is new technologies, and especially how you can use them to form groups, to work in groups. And that's it about Jonathan. He can probably tell you much more. So that's it. Back over to you in the studio. Great, thanks, uh, Paulina. That's great. Um, that was really, really uh, fascinating, and I think um, certainly group work something that I'm interested in, and how that might work. And obviously, you can see from part of this process, we're, we're thinking about those things, um, along with how we use these technologies. And part of um, I think this unit and units to come is, is working out how we use this technology, not just to learn, but also to uh, to create projects, to collaborate with others. Um, I'm going to hand over to Tim for a second because I think he uh, just has something he wanted to say. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, I wanted to say that in uh, in, in order to, for us to, to move through everything, um, to hopefully give everybody a go, um, I've got here a, a an antique piece, which is actually an iPhone 3GS. And I am going to be setting it to three minutes. And um, so when the three minutes is up, uh, Andy is going to do something. I'm not sure what that is. Or one of us will do something. I think um, I will put three minutes. I'll just put three minutes in the chat window. And that will be your cue to wrap up. So I hope nobody minds that, but it's just in order to um, enable everybody to ha have a go at, uh, at uh, taking part. So I'm going to sign off now and, and uh, hand back to Andy. Great. He's a real taskmaster. Sat next to me with, you know, tapping his, tapping his watch. Um, Great. Okay. So that was, uh, that was fantastic. Paulina, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thought it was a, um, really interesting to um, to hear and, and, and your observations and the things that you kind of uh, took on board about Jonathan um, and you presenting. Okay. So um, speaking of uh, Jonathan, he's actually next in our uh, queue and he's going to uh, talk about Ferry. So Jonathan, I'm going to turn off the talk and the video hand over to you. You can either turn both on or just the talk, um, and we'll have a look at your uh, presentation while we listen along. OK, over to you, Jonathan. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, I've just lost the page. For, sorry. Um, Ferry Van Dyke, lovely man, um, lives in London and also in Amsterdam. So the first photograph is, is of Ferry, um, probably near his flat, near Tower Bridge, near Design Museum. Um, he used to work for Shell, um, and he's just taken a, he's taken a career break, and I think this course is just the perfect um, thing for his career break. Um, and um, he is married, and there's a photograph of where his <laughs> that church isn't his flat or isn't his house. It's near there, uh, so I think it's just down from there. 
looks great. And that's really in the centre of Amsterdam and uh, on a nice warm day. I'm very cold in Brighton. Um, and uh, looking through different... Um, we had a discussion on Skype and also there's quite a lot about Ferry on, on the internet because he won um, the board member of the year award for the arts and business um, for his um, overseeing Hoxton Hall. Um, he was the chair of the trustees of Hoxton Hall. And I would recommend going to Hoxton Hall's website. It's really good and it shows what a good job Ferry did. Uh, as the chair of trustees, but now he's moved on and he's now chair of um, the board of trustees for former, who are a um, multimedia disciplinary art group who do some really fantastic and fabulous things. I've I've enjoyed Ryoji Okida's um, performance projections, and uh, last year or no, in 2010, um, they commissioned U.S. filmmaker Bill Morrison, who is Supreme and composer Johan Johansson um, to do the Miners Hymn, which is a tribute to the um, the Northeast mining industry. So that was a performance and film projection. Um, Bill Morrison uses found and researched film, cuts it together. Um, Ferry uh, would like would like this course to give him better understanding of what the art sector is, the academic underpinning of the arts sector um, because he would like to introduce business practices into it and to simplify some of those business practices so artists like myself can understand them because actually he says they will be very useful um, for all of us um, to give ourselves, I don't know, a position, uh, a good argument, a good argument point or a discussion point um, within, um, within the whole of society. I think I agree with him. I think artists have lost out in that discussion and need to have some of those skills. So um, that's what Ferry's going to bring to it. And he's also going to take, take out of it what the art world and the intuitions and the wisdoms that the art world can give him back. That's my presentation on Ferry. That was perfect timing. Look, and Tim was straight on it with the three with the three minute warning, and you you were you were perfectly on time. Um, thank you very much, uh, Jonathan um, and uh, and Ferry. Um, just to say um, uh, that well, two things there. Um, former um, one of the I think one of the lecturers that you'll have I think for unit three Stephanie Deekfoss she'll also be speaking at our face-to-face -face weekend I know she did a little bit of consultancy going back some years for um, for former so um, there's uh, there's a connection there and also uh, the kind of the role of artists in business there was a um, very you might be I'm trying to, all of you actually you might be interested in looking at uh, a group called Art, the Artist Placement Group, which was set up by um, an artist who's, who's dead now, um, John Latham, and um, his uh, then partner Barbara Stavini, and they set up uh, the Artist Placement Group to try and place artists within business, not in a residency sense to produce work, but actually to affect change or to bring away an artist thinks to a boardroom and a meeting room. Um, they were quite a haphazard organisation um, through the 60s, so they never they never quite managed to, to keep it going, but they did some really interesting placements. So if you have a look at the Artist Placement Group, uh, also known as APG, um, then that, that might be of interest to both of you. Um, okay, fantastic. What a, what a brilliant presentation. Right, so um, we are going to go to um, Anita, um, and I'm going to hand over to you. And Tim's going to start his stopwatch as soon as you start, so beware. And um, okay, Anita, over to you. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Great. Um, so I had my um, introduction with Enrica Franca. So we had our catch up over Skype and WhatsApp. Um, and Enrique has travelled quite a lot um, around Europe and kind of in Australia as well. Um, so she's from Italy, um, from a town called Pesaro, which is near Bologna um, in Italy. Um, and then when she was 19, 
actually moved to Farnham, just outside London, to study for three years. Um, and that's where she studied in um, advertising and brand communication. Um, and after studying, after those three years, she moved to Australia. And first of all, to Melbourne and worked in hospitality there as well. Um, and with the Australian visa system, if you want to stay there for a fair bit of time, like up to two years, um, you have to do some farm work. Um, so she did 88 days of working, of, of doing farm work, um, and then uh, lived in um, Sydney after that. And I think during that whole period, I think um, kind of discovered more of a creative side to her own interests, um, and then began working in um, an art gallery, contemporary art gallery, um, being assistant to a director, and also kind of assistant curating as well. And it's during that time she started looking to apply for studying. Um, she then moved to Amsterdam, uh, where she has moved uh, back um, from Amsterdam to London just last week. Um, she was there for about four or five months doing like an internship. Um, and the two pictures that she sent through, the one of um, herself was taken last year, and then the one in front of the big picture of the circle with more dots on it was taken at the Biennale exhibition in Venice um, last year as well. Um, from the course, she's wanting to gain some more knowledge kind of in the creative sector. I think um, at the end of it, um, it'd be great to have an art gallery to run something like that and um, include work from contemporary artists, but also use her, her hospitality experience as well um, and maybe link it into a cafe or restaurant as well. So it'd be a kind of combination of, um, of different hubs in, in one art gallery. And that is all. Great, thank you, um, thank you very much. That was really, um, really insightful. Thank you. I uh, enjoyed that. I think the 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 um, I was just thinking about you you talking about this idea of a gallery and cafe model. Um, there's a um, there's a great online, and I'll, I'll try and find out the link uh, before the end of the session. There's a great online video um, from the director of MEMA uh, Middlesbrough. Um, institute where he's talking about uh, a radical usefulness for art and what if the cafe became the focus of the art rather than something that was added on to the side um, and it's quite radical stuff but it's, it's well worth a look I'll send that link around and you can look at it in your own in your own time um, so we're not looking at it while we're watching other people's presentations but I'll, I'll send that around before the end of the um, session so um, Irene um, we're going to hand over to uh, to you, um, and you're going to be introducing uh, Anna. Um, so yeah, fantastic. All right, over to Irene. Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Um, right. So Anna and I, um, we got in touch first via uh, email, and then um, through Skype. We had a really nice uh, chat. So she's Anna is Italian and uh, she comes from um, Macerata, which is a, a city in base located in the center of Italy. And um, she has an established career as a psychologist. She has worked as a psychologist for 15 years um, in the public sector um, for a job center. And she's currently in maternity leave. So she has moved to London fairly recently. He was about six months ago and uh, she lived in Reading with her family and with her husband and her daughter Emma, which is with lovely, she uh, her three year old daughter. And um, so um yeah, because her husband moved to London for because he got um offered a really good job um, an important um university. Um and um, she she basically has always had a, a real passion for um, the arts and cultural um, sector. Um, she has always attended um, local events in in Macerata and also um, in other parts of Italy. And uh, she always got really she always been really curious about them. And to the time that she thought, well, I would really like to start um, taking a more active part um, in these type of events. So what can I do? Um, so probably when she, when she moved to when she moved to London, um, she found this master and she thought, 
okay, this is, could be really what um, I'm looking for. Um, so she's doing this mainly um, currently, but she's also attending an English course to improve her uh, English, which is, you know, I have to say, I think she's very good while she's doing this um, as well. Um, and so um, what she said, and I put a quote in the last slide, um, is that she said that she thinks that art can really change um, the face of a nation, I think it's true. Um, and it's quite, you know, I mean, I think her proposal and uh, the idea that art can really influence, um, you know, like culture in general, it's, I know, just found really interesting. And um, I think this is um, Anna, um, pretty much. And let's see. Thanks. I thank you, uh, Irene. So just uh, when you do finish speaking, if you just click the talk talk button, um, then it, it disconnects and, and goes on. Um, thank you very much, Irene. That was great. Um, I like the quote very much, and I think certainly it's something that is on an agenda at the moment. Again, I think the the Mima um, director's uh, film is. You'll see that when I when I post the link. Um, also, I was talk. I spoke yesterday briefly at a uh, at a conference at William Morris's gallery in Walthamstow, over in the east of uh, London, called Old Old Houses, New Visions, um, and they had a, an exhibition um, currently on by Bob and Roberta Smith, who are campaigning for uh, who's very much campaigning for the role of arts within schools to be emphasised and increased. Um, it's well worth going to see uh, the exhibition if you are. Um, in Walthamstow at any uh, at any point. Um, so yes, I think definitely on the agenda, um, and something that will recur um, throughout this MA certainly, and that that role of of, of art um, within society and its its function, um, or, or lack of function, use, useful or uselessness. They're, I think they they both have a have a have a purpose. Um, all right, great, thank you. So. Um, uh, let's hand over to Luciana next, and she's going to introduce um, Kasha, who we haven't got with us uh, this evening. So it'll be a, again, it will be a one-way um, one-way exchange. Kasha sent her apologies. Um, so Luciana, I'm going to hand over to you. Um, here we go. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Here we go. Um, so, um, Kasha and I, uh, first of all, um, communicated via email, then moved on to Skype. It would have been actually lovely to meet her in person, but she's based in San Francisco. Um, I then, uh, so following our conversation, I then, um, that led me to do some more research into um, her own project that I'm going to talk about in a minute. So, um, Kasia is originally from uh, Cleveland, uh, and if you scroll down, you can see her beautiful houseboat um, where she lived a few years back. Um, she now lives in San Francisco, where she's been um, essentially working in healthcare and marketing for the past 15 years, and this is where, uh, what she considers to be home. Um, Moving um, in terms of her spare time, um, she plays roller derby, so she's very sporty. Although I'm told that she's given that up um, quite recently, um, but she's still quite quite sporty. Um, and then moving on to uh, the reason as to why she decided to um, to, to um, join the course. Well, I'm taking a little bit of a step back because this story is quite fascinating. So back in 2012, um, uh, the world was really shocked about the rape and the death of a 23-year-old woman who the press uh, called Nibbaya, which means uh, fearless in uh, Sanskrit. Um, 
Now, um, Clash has started to do a bit of a research into um, into this tragic event, and essentially there was um, there were a lot of uh, beautiful images of beautiful art produced by um, female artists, but they were all empowering images, um, really really powerful and strong, and all very very positive. And then um, all along, essentially, uh, the research led back to an artist called uh, um, Shilo Shiv Suleiman, uh, who set up this company called uh, Fearless Collective. So essentially, an artist collective um, that um, essentially is, is inspiring positive and trust-based conversations about gender and sexuality uh, through art. Um, so then um, Kasha was really inspired by, um, by the work of this collective and she decided to uh, join in 2013 as a, as a volunteer. Um, and she was very, she's very passionate about the work of this um, artist collective and also um, the way they look at uh, feminism in a positive um, way, essentially. And she's now in charge of business planning, fundraising and social media. In terms of the reasons why um, she decided to join the course, well, um, it's, it's all linked to this um, side project. So essentially, she's wanting to investigate whether fear, fearless and neurons are having a positive impact um, upon all the different communities, although they do have uh, some evidence that that's the case. Uh, but also, um, they want to take um, this initiative to, uh, to an international level. So it's all about exploring risks and, risks and challenges of scaling um, this um, project internationally. And in my mind, it's, it's absolutely uh, possible because gender-related uh, issues are um, essentially an issue that um, basically touch every single community in one shape of um, in, in some shape or form. And then if you, if you scroll to the very last page, you can see Kasha's creative work. So she's, she's also um, um, an artist, uh, so she's, uh, she's producing embroidery and paper creations that are all taking inspiration from uh, the Fearless Collective uh, theme. So I thought that was really quite good, uh, and I, I wish I could tell you a bit more about it because um, I was actually quite taken aback. But yeah, this is um, Kasha, so um, um, that's me. Luciana, that was that was great, um, really um, insightful, and yes, fascinating. And I think when we when we've got um, when we've got Kasha at the at the face to face weekend, we need to uh, quiz her some more about uh, fearless. And and I think that you know that just to emphasise, we we will be in our face to face weekend. There'll be introductions formally. There'll also be a dinner. So there'll be lots of chance to uh, to get to the bottom of some of the things that we're uh, engaging with and I think the diversity of some of the, the models that we've been looking at already that people involved with is just fantastic. Um, okay, Luciana, thank you so much. Um, okay, so we are going to go to Anna who um, is now going to present uh, Irene. Okay, all right, over to you, Anna. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, as um, Irene or Irene already said, uh, we got information uh, uh, from each other through emails and Skype, but we also Googled actually each other, and that's um, interesting actually. So, um, on, on you can see uh, from the first slide uh, a picture. Uh, it's a picture of Dalston in London because Irene uh, lives in Dalston. And uh, in particular, um, the, the, the slide shows a building that went, up, went under renovation last year as a part of a micro project which wants to revitalize, uh, revamp uh, the neighborhood. I have chosen this picture because it represents Irene and me as well and maybe others in our virtual class. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think uh, one of the many aims of a cultural manager is bringing arts and culture to everyone's doorstep. And that, that is uh, what uh, a way of doing it with a micro project. So uh, let's meet uh, uh, Irene. 
uh, on the second slide you can see the, a, a picture of her. And there are also uh, some really interesting facts. Uh, she's a, a quite resourceful woman, I think. She's 29 years old. She's Italian. Uh, she graduated in marketing and communication, and she moved to London in 2011. Um, previously, she worked as a research uh, executive at We Are London, and currently she's working as a, an account executive at, at uh, All Together Now. As you can see on the second slide, uh, there is a, um, a link to a website, Irene's agency, actually. And if you look at the, at the site, you can scroll the page, and below the mind map on the side, you can read responsive, efficient, practical, collaborative. And these are essential qualities for a cultural manager, I think. Uh, she and, uh, and her team uh, believe it, promote it, and they have it. And that's not bad, actually. And uh, on the slide number three, uh, we can see uh, more uh, personal facts. I discovered, for example, during the interview that uh, uh, Irene um, has always had a great, great interest in the heart section. Uh, she was surrounded by heart. Uh, uh, her mother is a painter, for example, and she visited her first exhibition at age of five. And she's into music as well. She took piano lessons, singing, singing lessons, and, and so on. But why uh, did she choose uh, the DSMA? Uh, her first intent is to uh, finding a way is to is finding a way to support artists, helping them to express their talent, and that uh, is a very uh, controversial and challenging issue in the art sector. And uh, and that's it. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That was super, uh, super insightful. Um, yeah, I think that, that idea of uh, supporting artists, sustaining, um, sustaining their, their works and their careers is, is, is really interesting. And I think it's actually an incredibly interesting time. Um, I think certainly within the, within the market, there's a lot of discussion about alternative models for galleries at the moment. Um, because of a feeling that the, that the purely commercial model just isn't working, and how do you find some kind of way between that uh, kind of uh, hybridity or, or so on? So, um, again, something that's going to be coming up quite a lot, I think, over the uh, over the next two years. Um, um, certainly, something that we can be at the forefront of in terms of discussion. Great. Awesome. Right. So, uh, Yolanda, we've got you next, and you are going to um, be introducing Alexi. So, I am going to, hand, without further ado, hand over to you. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm going to introduce um, Alexi. So, um, first of all, we for um, for this presentation, we got in touch uh, through uh, various um, kind of media, and so we started. Um, we emailed each other. We we arranged a meeting uh, using WhatsApp, and then we also kind of exchanged information. We met in person as well because I thought it would be a good opportunity to meet each other and, and learn a bit more about about each other. And um, and then we exchange information uh, through um, OneDrive. We uh, we send information. Uh, we also check information through um, LinkedIn. So we use a variety of, of media for this. And um, Alexi Alexi is originally from Helsinki, and he has been living in the UK since uh, October 2015. So only a few a few months. 
um, he graduated in arts and cultural management, and um, since then he was he was actually working. Uh, he was studying part time because he was also working full time. So you can see throughout his uh, career experience uh, while he was um, studying for his uh, BA honors. He had um, he had some experience in production and events management um, in Helsinki. So some of his work was uh, with Helsinki uh, Design Week as a production assistant. He he also worked as the National Sports Federation as a producer. He worked for the city of Helsinki as an event in the events office, and um, and also in the International Film Festival in Helsinki International Film Festival as a marketing coordinator. Um, before he moved to the UK, he worked uh, in Helsinki Pride as an executive producer. And um, and part of his interest in, in the arts is, is mainly um, film. Film is, is one of his passions, basically. So one of his uh, favorite sports in Helsinki is, uh, is the movie theater, which is um, is quite known in there. Um, so on the second slide, you can see um, Alex's interest since he moved here. So he's starting actually a new job at BSI this week. And um, he's starting as an event coordinator, and, and his career aspiration is actually to work in the film industry. So he loves the art, he, he loves theater. And, um, and in particular, we, we were discussing as well uh, what kind of uh, um, genre he likes. Um, he has a wide, um, he, he loves a lot of genres, so there wasn't a specific one. But um, he does like uh, non mainstream international films. And um, we also discussed some of his past work in Helsinki, and because he loves music, he used to also work as a DJ at a local venue on a Saturday. Um, so he also tried to to go to gigs and, and the music industry as well. So he, he enjoys uh, that kind of thing. Um, with regards to what what Alex see, um, his interest in doing this MA, basically he he finds that it fits well with his past experience, his skills, and also his future aspirations. Um, he's very interested in arts and, and he wanted, in particular, he, he found that this MA would be quite interesting as a platform to share ideas with, with everybody. Um, there's a variety, a mix, uh, a mix of participants with, um, with um, different experiences and he wanted to kind of share ideas and knowledge and skill base as well. Um, and um, and also he wants to explore the arts and culture in depth and and, and kind of career and developing his career and understanding more about the industry and hopefully um, getting new ideas for um, uh, maybe creating a business in the future or, or being explore more the creativity involved in, in kind of leading roles um, that this may might bring. And um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's the presentation of Alexis. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, thank you for uh, for presenting that, Yolanda. Um, really interesting to hear about uh, Alexi, um, and and a film a film side of things is is a is a great addition. I think um, we're getting a really rounded kind of cultural uh, group here. It's fantastic. Um, okay, so uh, to keep us moving along, I'm going to hand over to uh, Ferry, who's going to be presenting uh, Paulina. Um, great, over to Ferry. Ferry, uh, if you are with us, um, if you click your talk button, um, which is just below the screen where you would normally see my grinning face, um, then you should be able to uh, connect. Yes, I found it, I think. I was dreading this moment. Can you hear me? Good. Um, so let me introduce uh, Paulina then to, uh, to everybody. Um, the slide is quite uh, busy, so if you want to blow it up, you can press on View Original on the right-hand corner and you get, uh, you get, a, you get a better uh, view. Um, Paulina has been, is a very uh, active woman. She's born in Finland, um, but has then traveled all around the world. Um, and she basically raised in different parts of the world. She went back to Finland, has lived there for 17 years, and is now uh, in London for, uh, for, for her first year. 
into a three-year uh, term as the director of the Finnish Institute in, in London, which is um, actually uh, based close to St. St. Martin's in the King's Cross uh, area. This uh, didn't mean actually that we uh, we met um, yet. Um, we have done all the preparation together with Jonathan over uh, over Skype um, and email and Facebook uh, over the weekend. And we basically talked to each other on uh, on Sunday. So she lives in London with her three daughters. She also has one son and a husband and a dog. Those three they are back in in Helsinki, and she travels up and down um, from there. The reason why she's doing this uh, is this course is because she is, um, I uh, didn't want to put this down, but the, her words is that she's a bit bored in her current role. So I think meaning she has time to, intellectual time to uh, to focus on, on something else. Um, and um, what she wants to get out of this uh, course is to better understand what's happening in the cultural world, uh, identify trends and new ways of thinking, which she then can bring back to, uh, to Finland or in the overall Finnish-UK uh, cultural relationship. And of course, you also would like to gain insights from the other participants. And you can see why she might get bored a little bit sitting in an office thinking about budgets, um, because basically she's been very active as a journalist and a director and a producer um, doing um, stuff all over the world, but also in Afghanistan and in Pakistan. And um, she currently lives in Harrow. Um, and she loves living there because apparently there you are surrounded by uh, people from from those uh, from that region. So she still feels a little bit home because that's what she really liked uh, doing. Now she also likes uh, for her home is sitting on a sailing uh, boat as you can see in the right bottom. So they do that every year with with the whole family. Um, and she loves scuba diving and she didn't mention this but I took this away from the text which I copied from the Finnish Institute website. She's practicing uh, uh, karate and apparently she has a black belt in that one. <laughs> um, so I think that is uh, all I have to say about Paulina. Very, very fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, God, you're all so impressive doing all of these things. It's completely, <laughs> me and Tim are sat here just saying, wow, that's amazing. Um, so uh, without further ado, just to keep us to time, I'm going to hand over to Alexi, who's going to introduce Yolanda. So uh, Alexi, over to you. Can you hear me? All right, so uh, Yolanda. Uh, Yolanda comes from Spain. She comes from the coastal town of Punta Umbria, which is located in the uh, southwest part of the country. She moved to Oxford uh, in 1999 uh, with an initial plan to uh, stay for six months and improve her, her language skills, but uh, but she decided then to stay longer and, and uh, found herself from the access to university courses in, in 2001. And in the next year, in 2002, uh, she started BA Media and Performing Arts Studies at the Brooks University in Oxford, from where she graduated in 2005. Uh, then from 2005 to 2007, uh, she was volunteering and, and freelancing in, in many different places like acting and uh, directing and, and production. But then in 2007, she she went to work for Pegasus Theatre, which is which is a small charity. Uh, so her her roles involved a lot of uh, pretty much everything. But uh, but the first four years concentrated in in sales and marketing, and then the last four years until 2013 in in an administration. Uh, in 2013, she left Pegasus and went to work for. Uh, the Said Business School, which is a part of uh, Oxford University. She worked there as a program coordinator in, in uh, executive allocation, uh, which included, for example, uh, event management. Then in, in June 2015, she moved to uh, London, uh, into Notting Hill, uh, to work for London Business School. And she worked there also in the executive allocation department 
uh, but as an open programs administrator, so the role includes a lot more of uh, project management and research, like benchmarking. Uh, she likes to she likes Notting Hill uh, because of the good services and and uh, the nearby uh, Portobello Road market. Uh, then about the hopes for the course. So as she has uh, experience in in both arts and, and 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 business allocation, she wishes to uh, combine these expertises to learn learn how to combine these and. And this means, uh, for example, teaching leadership uh, using Shakespeare. Uh, she also wants to deepen her knowledge of the arts, uh, learn to be a more creative leader, and then to explore new avenues and opportunities rising throughout the MA. That's it. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much. I think I'm probably going to leave it there. I know Yanini, you, you joined us a little bit later. Um, I'm going to hold off that. And, and the last one on that list is, is um, Luciana. And again, um, we haven't got Kasia with us, so uh, you'll have to read about each other, uh, those last few, um, if you don't mind. But as I say, there's going to be lots of chance uh, in a couple of weekends' time to um, to get to know each other um, face to face and uh, even um, even more and find out, yeah, I think I've got loads, loads of questions for all of you, like how do you fit all of this in? Um, being the first one, so uh, I'll be asking you that, that question at the first phase of phase. Um, okay, so um, I just want to make a little bit of time because we're, we're rattling through this session and that. I really wanted mainly for the session to be about hearing about each other. I think it's important. It can be quite odd when we're not all sitting in the same place and wondering who, who those people are. And I think you did a great job of um, contacting each other. Um, you'll see now, if you go uh, back to the to the main screen on Blackboard Collaborate, we'll put Padlet away for, uh, for now. You can always return to that. Um, it's there. Um, and again, this session is recorded, so if you want to look at the Padlet and listen back, you'll be able to, um, so that you, you can go back over the stuff. And certainly the last bit now that I'm going to talk about, you'll be able to revisit this. So if I rattle through it very quickly, please don't, uh, please don't worry. Um, and also if you have questions, we can. I want to talk a little bit about briefs and assessment on the, uh, on the course, just uh, part of our um, duty and responsibility to you is to make sure you're informed about the MA, uh, how we do things, procedure, all of those things. Um, now, for this unit, so, so you, you have a whole set of units, and if you, uh, if you look through the handbook, you get a moment to look at the handbook, all of the units are outlined in there along with what you've got coming up. Um, but the first unit, Researching Arts and Cultural Enterprise Unit 1, um, has three elements for, for assessment. Now, what you will find is in different units, most units will have different elements. Um, however, they may be marked slightly differently. So in some units, you'll, you might do two, three elements, but you'll get one holistic mark, uh, which basically means you'll get one mark form, and uh, all of those elements are kind of put together and in one marks kind of produced. Um, how this unit works in particular is we have percentages. So if you look at that first bullet point, we have three elements for assessment. Each element uh, has a different percentage. So you'll have a different feedback form and you'll have a mark for it. And then those uh, uh, percentages are put together for a final mark for the unit. So element one is 30%, element two 40, element uh, three is uh, so, each element is marked and graded separately. So, you'll, for element one, you'll be marked and separate, and then the grades from each element are added together for the final overall unit grade. Okay. As I say, again, 
if you need to look back at this, if you need to ask us questions, you can. If, you, if you've got questions, uh, maybe just save them at the moment for the chat box towards the end. Don't, don't type them in just yet because I might cover it in the coming slides. Um, and also at the face-to-face -face weekend, there'll be an opportunity to discuss and talk through these things. Um, so on your Moodle page, um, you will see in the um, Unit 1 section, at the very end, uh, we have a section here which says Assessment Briefs. And uh, at the bottom of that, so it, it, it lists the three elements, uh, and I'll talk about those in particular, but there's, there's a specific brief for each uh, for each element, and those three briefs can be found on that link where it says download the project briefs. That will take you to a page where you can download three separate PDFs, and each one relates to each brief. I'm going to talk about those in a little bit more detail. And then the other thing to note at this point, but this is really, I'll remind you again of this, in another seven or eight weeks' time, is just below that we have a link to a turn it in assessment submission where one of those elements will be submitted. But don't worry about that too much at the moment. Okay, so I would say, you know, uh, this week do download those briefs and uh, read through them at your own time and we can discuss them. The idea of this unit is that there are different tasks that build up to completing those units. So we'll be reading certain things that look towards a literature review, which is part of one of the briefs. We'll be uh, doing group work at the face-to-face -face weekend, which lead towards uh, element three, which is a presentation. Uh, and we'll also, uh, which we've already started, think about uh, designing a workflow profile page and keeping a research journal. So the idea is that we structure the teaching around uh, those elements um, and support your production of them. Okay, so element one. Um, now there are three elements. Uh, that most, nearly all of them come in uh, in March. So you, you they'll come in towards the very end of this uh, process. And the first element uh, and the first brief is that you create and design a workflow profile page and then create and keep a workflow research journal which must contain a 500-word reflective report at the end of the unit. Yeah, hang on one second. Uh, Tim just wants to uh, say something at this point, so I'm going to hand over to uh, Tim, um, and then I will be back. Uh, hi, everyone. I know that um, some of you reported that the link to workflow isn't working. Uh, and in actual fact, the, uh, that there was some maintenance work going on it, uh, going on to, uh, I think this morning and this afternoon. But I'm being told now that workflow is back online and it's, and, uh, so if you want to, um, have a look at workflow again, um, you, you'll be able to access it properly. Great. Thanks, Tim. So uh, there you go. So workflow is uh, now um, up and running. So create and design a workflow profile page, um, then create and keep a workflow research channel, which must contain a 500-word reflective report at the end of the unit. Um, so this is really a journal that you will keep throughout the process. Uh, we talked a bit about research journals, and it's really a, a kind of reflection on that process. So it's a day-to-day -day, um, thing, really. It's just something that you can you can keep as you go along, um, and we'll be looking back at it. Um, now, one thing we will be asking you um, to do for the face-to-face -face weekend is to present your profile page. We won't be assessing you at this point. Um, it's just as an introduction, so you'll be introducing yourself and your profile page. And if you've got more work, if you've done more pages on workflow between there and then, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, just to give you kind of tasks to 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 build up towards this uh, element, and then at the very end, you'll be adding this kind of 500 word reflective report. Um, the link uh, the link here on that bullet point um, is the link that will take you to the download page for the um, it'll take you to the download page for the briefs, and then. That is due on the 11th of March, uh, so you need to make your pages available to me, and then I can look at those and um, and assess those. 
the Duncan, I don't think you've missed uh, missed anything uh, vital. Um, so that is element one, keeping uh, a research uh, journal and workflow uh, in workflow. Again, thinking about digital media, and then a reflective report. Again, we can talk about that uh, throughout the course if we need to. Learning outcomes and related marking criteria. So you'll hear this uh, throughout the, the, the two years. Um, the way that we uh, assess um, here at Central St. Martins is that we define a set of lear learning outcomes, and these relate to a marking criteria. Um, so we might have for the for the entire course we may have say uh, eight or nine um, learning outcomes, and then we for each part of the unit we would select. Uh, appropriate learning outcomes. These can then be related to a marking criteria, which is how we come up with uh, our assessment. So if you look here for element one, you have um, on satisfactory completion of the unit, you should be able to research and reflect critically and select and use relevant tools and methodology to interrogate research materials. So this is the research marking criteria. And when you get feedback forms, they will, they will specifically relate to these uh, marking criteria. Uh, the second one is to analyze and critically evaluate online forms of, forms of communication and information dissemination. And the third one is to work collaboratively to problem solve and innovate. Uh, this is part of the process. And in a way, this is linked to um, the task that you've already gone through. Element two. Element two will be to submit a 1,000 word literature review. I'm going to do a, a specific session on uh, writing a literature review, what that entails. So don't worry uh, if, you're, if you're uncertain about that at the moment. But this is where we start to bring in theory and we look at how theory is used. And, and um, certainly next week, um, in next week's session, that's uh, one of the things that we're going to be tackling um, there and then that idea of a literature review will, will move on from there um, and, there, and I've got some good links for um, for reading about developing a literature review. Uh, again, the link there is for um, is for the download for the brief download and again that's due and you submit that via Moodle again back on that uh, Moodle page where it said turn in submission. Um, again, we'll, we, we will remind you of all of these things, so don't worry. Um, and that's submitted via Moodle at uh, 1 o'clock um, on the 11th of March, so the same date um, as, the, um, as element one. And then finally, these are the, not finally, these are the learning outcomes, and then I'll get on to um, the third one. Learning outcomes and related marking criteria. For this element, you'll see that there are two specifically for this one. Um, and this is research and reflect critically and select and use relevant tools and methodologies to interrogate research material. So this is really that you are evidencing your, um, your reading and understanding of, of key texts. And then analyze and critically evaluate online forms of communication and information dissemination. Okay, so, and then the final element for this unit is to contribute to a group presentation of a proposal for the selection of an online platform, uh, e.g. Facebook, Workflow, Google, and the creation of content. You've already started to, to, to work with these um, platforms, and most of you do on a daily basis. And I think it's just trying to critically evaluate them and also to think about the appropriate tools that we use for specific projects. So I'm going to try and tie this into an activity that we've got at the um, at the face-to-face -face weekend for you. Um, where you'll be working on kind of little mini uh, projects and thinking about what the outcome for those might be. And then between the face-to-face -face, uh, weekend and the, uh, and the presentation, which is the 2nd of March, so in the, over a couple of weeks, we'd be asking you to use those platforms in order to discuss this, this mini project. Um, just to identify the kind of the best uh, platforms within which to collaborate digitally. So it's really looking at how we uh, digitally collaborate. And the learning outcomes of marking criteria, just to go through it so I'm, so I'm clear. Um, again, research uh, is number one there. Research will reflect critically, relevant tools. Number two is to analyze and critically evaluate online forms of communication. And the third one, again, to work collaboratively. So it's showing that, you, uh, that you're working together and you can uh, use those challenges. Um, 
in this case specifically online. Okay. This link here on this page is to what, what is referred to as a marking matrix, very grand, um, and this will take you to um, to a page which lists how we mark. We use uh, the letter grading system, um, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and, and this marking criteria shows next to all of those learning outcomes the the standard of work relating to each mark. So that's the mark that's the matrix that we use when we are marking your work. Um, so you can see that you can uh, um, then make um, then you can be informed about how how we mark in our process. There we go. And Tim's going to upload that to uh, to Moodle for us. So you've got it. Um, Okay, and then this page here, which I think we can probably put up as well, but there's a still here. It's probably quite small for you to see. Um, this gives a translation of um, how things translate um, from letter grades to percentages. Um, a lot of you might be used to percentages um, and also the idea of a distinction merit and uh, and pass. So if you look across there, um, the A to F um, down the left-hand side are the marks that we um, that we use in our in our marking system. NS at the bottom there is a uh, is a non-submission. Um, and then if you map that over to an equivalent percentage, and then if you map right over on the right-hand side, you have how those things translate um, here: distinction, merit and pass. So between that and the marking matrix um, you can um, you can work at um, you can work out how that relates best to your understanding of a of a marking system. Um, so that's the marking. Okay, so that's just to give you this kind of sense of um, of our procedures. Um, and at the end of the unit um, quite quickly after the end of the unit, you'll get uh, feedback sheets relating to each of those elements, and they will give you an indicative uh, grade, an indicative mark. Um, this um, will then won't be actually validated as a as a mark until you've completed uh, the MA, so m much later on. But that gives you an indication. Um, so as long as you've passed that, you then proceed through uh, to the next unit. Okay. So, um, just to, just to talk about the next session, I'm aware we're we're uh, running out of time. Duncan, yes. How much of each unit makes up the total for the MA? Uh, each unit, and and this is there's a link on Moodle um, in the not in the unit one section, but in the section above that on Moodle, uh, there's a section which has your handbook in it and this is all listed in there. This unit uh, is 20 credits and I believe you are building up to uh, 180 credits over the two years and as far as I'm aware you have 720 credit units and then your dissertation is 60 credits. Um, you can double check that in the handbook. Um, Enrica, can my reflective journal be only on workflow or do I also have to show you one, uh, one on paper? I don't need to see one on, I actually need to see one on workflow, but if you do keep one on paper, then I would say probably the way, and I'm, I'm, I'm all for keeping notebooks and, uh, and paper as well actually, in fact, just to give you some uh, evidence, I'm not a completely uh, digital uh, human being. Um, what you might want to do is document that through photographs that you can upload to workflow. We are assessing workflow. Okay, fantastic. All right. Are there any other questions at this point? Just if if you've got a question, maybe type it in the box, and I'm going to move on to the last slide. Um, I'm aware that we're we're rounding up, um, and the last slide is what I would like you to do for next week. Now, next week. Um, Next week's session is in the morning, 
Um, that's because I'm going to be broadcasting from Hong Kong. Um, and I won't have Tim sitting sitting by my side. So, yeah, there might be a big oh my god moment. Um, and um, then we will uh, we will see. So you might have to bear with us uh, next week. I know it will be early in the morning for you guys as well. Um, but we will endeavour um, to um, to do it from here and Hong Kong. So it's a uh, again another test of our uh, technological wit and while. It's scheduled for 7 a.m. Yes, next uh, next week. That's at Wednesday. Um, I think that's on the um, on the Google calendar. Um, yeah, there is all, there is there is also a um, a Hong Kong um, session that I'm doing while I'm there, which is in the in the evening. <laughs> Paulina, yeah, unfortunately, it is 7 a.m. Um, Yes, 7 a.m. is next. Yes, I know. I know there should only be one seven o'clock um, in the in the world. Um, if you if you miss it, um, it will be recorded. So so there's a session at seven. I'm doing a a, a, a <laughs> There we go. Um, there is a session at two o'clock as well in the afternoon, so um, which I'll be doing with the Hong Kong cohort. So if um, if you uh, don't want to stay in, yeah, Enrique, you should prepare coffee and get get the coffee on in advance. Um, if you don't want to sit in on the seven a.m. one, you can sit in on the two o'clock one um, and hear what some of the uh, Hong Kong students are saying. So, um, Paulina, in response to your um, to your question about reading for the literature review. Um, I've got three texts that I want you to look at for next week, in fact, and this is the start of the thinking about the literature review assignment. And from there, I want you to start to think, pick one of those texts and start to think about how you might build a literature review and find literature around the topics that are being discussed in it. And again, we can discuss that a little bit more next week. So uh, my next slide, and apparently that leads me very nicely onto the next slide, um, is next week's assignment. So what I would like you to do for next week is I'd like you to read the assigned text. They're available on Moodle. There, there's, a, there's actually a, a left-hand banner that says reading list in the unit one section. There's also the link uh, here on this slide. And then read the assigned text. So there, there are three texts. Um, they're not all the easiest uh, texts in the world, but I think um, we'll get through it. Um, so. Um, if you could read those three texts um, for the next session, that would be great. We'll see what state we're in at seven o'clock in the morning to uh, to talk about them. Um, when you've read them, I want you to choose one text. So read all read all three, um, and I, I think you can you can kind of relative you know read relatively quickly uh, or as quickly as you can through all three, and then define one of those texts. Um, that interests you, that captures you, that is the one that engages you perhaps most. Um, choose one to focus on. And then I want you to think about five key points that are in the text. So, so reading through, what are the five things that you identify as being kind of important in that text? And we're going to discuss those um, at the next session. And then one last thing that I want you to do is for that text to think of one question you would ask of that text or the author. So it's, it's defining the key points that the authors make, but it's also trying to get you to think about a, a question. What question would you ask of that text? And the next session is called, uh, what's the point of theory? So we're going we're gonna to be trying to tease out some of the points that are made by, um, by those authors and, and think about how we might focus and develop a literature review. OK, um, I'm going to hang on here for a couple of minutes. That kind of winds up the session. If anyone's got any questions, um, please do um, type them in the chat box. I'll hang on here for a, uh, for a few more minutes just in case. Um, and um, next time I see you, I will be broadcasting from Hong Kong. So I look forward to it. Um, thank you all very much. Uh, for being here this evening. One second, Tim, uh, before you all sign off, Tim is just going to uh, ask you one question. So I'm going to say goodbye, good evening, and good night, and I will see you next week uh, live from Hong Kong. Thank you.
Uh, hi everyone, before you all go, um, I just have a technical question around communication because I know this has been something that we've kind of struggled with a little bit from our end. And I wanted to ask you if you have been receiving emails via Moodle. Um, and if you have, if you could click on the tick because that would indicate to me that I can contact you via your uh, college emails um, via Moodle. So could you click the green tick if you're able to receive college emails via Moodle and click the red cross if you're not. The reason I'm asking you this is so that we can work out the most effective way to be able to communicate with you over the next week. Okay, so Duncan is a no, and Luciana is a no as well. I'm not sure I get all in out, but very. Right. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of getting mixed messages here. Ah, okay, and I'm getting some emails down here as well. Um, okay, I'm just trying to work out. Okay, so um, what I'm getting here, not sure I get all in Outlook. Okay. Right. Well, it, what I'm getting here is that um, I'm getting kind of mixed messages. So I think some of you are able to get stuff via your college email and some of you are not. Uh, did you send uploading your homework instructions via Moodle. I certainly did in the beginning. Um, I think what we'll do is uh, to cover all bases, we'll contact you via your, well here's a question, here's a new question. Are you getting, are you able to access information via your college email? If you could click the tick button, or, or yes in the chat box. Okay, great. So lots of ticks. So you are receiving information into your college email. Okay, that's great. So what I will do then is I will look at, we'll be able to communicate with you via that, and I will make sure that I, that you receive an email plus something from via Moodle, so we've got all bases covered. Okay, thank you all very much. Okay, uh, I'm just going to say goodbye. So um, from, uh, from the team here at Central St. Martins, I would like to thank you very much for all taking part and uh, look forward to our next meeting next week. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone.